Mom's got nice hair, too. Both have nice hair. Like I said, something strange. Oh, layers of nostalgia. Recognize that? That was a clip from The Wonder Years, the 80s TV drama about growing up in the 60s. Fans may have wondered why the critically acclaimed hit never made it to DVD until now, almost 20 years after it went off the air. Here to explain the long road is WSJ entertainment reporter John Jurgensen. John, thanks so much for being with us. My pleasure. So, John, what a long, strange trip it's been. Can you fill us in? <laughs> <laughs> right. This show has been in video limbo for uh, more than 20 years now. Uh, the main thing that kept it away, and it's no big secret among the hardcore fans who've been asking for this show on DVD, is that the music that made the show so memorable is what kept it away from video. Uh, in other words, back in the day when the show first ran, they, see, they got permission to use these songs, like the Joe Cocker theme song that is so memorable for so many people. Uh, they got the licenses for the short term, you know, just for the initial broadcast run. Uh, there wasn't a big aftermarket for, for videos, and uh, DVD wasn't even really on the horizon at that point. So they didn't see, feel the need to get those long-term licenses, and it proved to be too expensive for many years to, uh, to get those licenses for the, for the home video market. Well, is it worth the wait, though? This is the question. I mean, of course, the music is so important. The soundtrack is, is integral. But who's buying DVDs these days? I mean, hasn't the DVD era already passed us by? That's a really good question. I mean, for those of us who have our Netflix streaming accounts uh, and, and other ways of watching video, uh, who don't go to the rental store anymore and, and hardly buy DVDs anymore, it's a big question, especially when this is a 26-disc set. Uh, you know, that, that starts around $250 and goes all the way to $500 for the box set. I mean, it's a big investment. So they're really gambling on the fact that people have such a nostalgic uh, uh, adoration for this show that they're willing to buy those sets. Um, it's really a kind of, kind, of, kind of a risky scenario, I, I think. But, you know, the Time Life is the distributor for this, uh, for this set. And they do a lot of these shows that they're in the whole business of nostalgia marketing uh, with those infomercials that many of us are so familiar with, with the, the song scrolling up the screen. So they, they're really experts in getting this stuff out there and tapping into that way. Uh, so they're selling it on direct marketing through the TV, also online and in stores. And they're trying to hopefully just capture all those folks who, you know, at least watched this show when they were kids or they watched it with their kids along. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the show resonated, as you said, with multiple generations of viewers, some of whom grew up with the characters like us, right, and others who relived their own wonder years. What do you think was in that special sauce? Well, I think that's exactly right. I mean, it's for, for the kids uh, who were watching that show at the time in the late 80s, early 90s, they were sort of seeing themselves on screen, you know, their 12, 13-year-old selves experiencing what it was like to, you know, have that first love or deal with uh, the bully at school. Uh, and for the older generations, you know, the parents watching this show, it was a throwback to those old days. Um, and, but I think also the, the key part of what the show did was kind of focus on suburban life. Uh, a sort of a generic anywhere USA suburban life that, that wasn't always depicted on TV at the time. You know, it, was, it wasn't about New York and it wasn't about LA. Uh, it was this place that could have been anywhere. Um, so I think that kind of broad um, universal theme is what really captured it. You know, whether it really holds up in repeat viewing is an open question. You know, having watched some of these episodes again, some of them can yeah. seem kind of slow, uh, a little bit predictable. Um, but then again, you know, you also dealing with a show that, that's been, you know, more than 20, 25 years old at this point. So it's a little bit different time. Absolutely. And is the whole thing available on demand and streaming? And can you get the soundtrack on demand? Uh, well, that's the, the demand on streaming uh, scenario is a pretty interesting question because it actually was already available on Netflix and Amazon for instant streaming. So you can just you know, call it up on your on your Netflix account. However, uh, a lot of the music, the original music was swapped out. They didn't have the license for, for the streaming component. So, for example, the Joe Cocker theme song mm. is not included in the streaming. They have a replacement version, sort of a generic version of the song. And that really uh, irked a lot of hardcore fans who, who figured that if you don't have those original songs, why, why, why bother to watch the thing at all? So that's been sort of a, uh, an asterisk on the whole streaming thing. Yeah. This, this new edition is only on DVD. Absolutely. All right. I think I might buy it. I'm a big fan of the show, John. Thank you so much for that. No problem.